Well, end of the camping season is upon us. We've just finished winterizing our little Viking camper trailer. And uh, if you're wondering the bounce sheets and the, the Rubbermaid tubs and the lack of anything on the bed, that's that's what's going on there. I thought this would be a great opportunity, though, to just give a quick little tour of some of the, the changes and upgrades that we've made to this trailer that perhaps you might find useful for yours. Little things that we've done that we think increases the usability and enjoyability of having this camper trailer. So... A lot of them are electrical, but not all of them. So we'll start off with electrical simplicity. This is the reading light over our bunk. It's the 12 volt chassis light one. It's it's LED, it's got pretty bad glare. It's not the most pleasant thing to use. So we went to Ikea and bought these LED gooseneck lamps and they normally would clip into the lamp. But in this case, if you use a little plastic clamp, you can actually mount them to the side of the cupboard and yes, they're 110. There's the switch underneath there, mounted again to make it easy to find and keep the cords out of the way at night. Much more pleasant than this glare-filled loveliness. If you have short power, why not enjoy it? Lighting is another issue in this part of the trailer. Again, you know, the, the stock lighting in these trailers is, uh, well, it is what it is. I mean, it's it's bright enough, it gets the job done, but it's very singular is a nice way to put it so these cupboards that open vertically when you open them they block the light not ideal especially because they don't open very well that's great for bashing ahead but that's a story for another day so what we did is we put lights in them and there's a little switch up here in the corner that when the cupboard shuts turns it off and i mean you can see you know i've got all the lights on in this trailer it's like a bit of an abyss in here. It's it's not the most pleasant thing to try and find anything in here. That's a lot better. So the light itself is a 12-volt uh, strip light. This one is made by Alpina. And again, this is a Princess Auto buy. Uh, for you in the States, you don't have Princess Auto. You have Harbor Freight. I think it's very similar. Any 12-volt lamp is going to work. We're, we're stealing power out of the light in the bottom of the cupboard. And we're just wiring it up. It's not the most elegant thing, but you don't really see it unless you're looking for it. And it's just a couple of wires up into the bottom of the switch. Really simple. Nothing much to it. All you got to do is put this switch in such a place that when the cupboard door closes, it trips it and turns the light off. Otherwise, especially if you were boondocking, you'd have this light on all the time. That's not desirable at all. In the cupboard, these are refrigerator... Uh, I don't know what they call them, but they're like a spring-loaded bar that you put in your fridge to keep all the stuff from falling all over the place. They're adjustable. Also good for keeping things like cupboard doors closed. Why, are, why do we have drawers in here? Well, this is another IKEA thing. We've modified this one. This is a three-drawer tall unit. We have flipped it over, cut it, and modified it. You really only have to drill a couple of extra holes to do this. There's nothing much else to it. But it's nice because you can see what's in it and it fits in here and you know with the bar out of the way obviously you can you can slide it out it just increases how much storage you have if there's any drawback to this whatsoever it's that if you have a tall item in the cupboard like say this because of the structural piece in the top you'd have to move this out of the way to open the drawer all the way not a big deal you can still get to it over the side and this thing fits in here really well and I've put a, a screw or two at the back of it just to keep it in place. But it really, it's probably not going anywhere anyway. Same idea, IKEA. These are actually uh, file holders that you would stand up on your desk. Again, screwed to the wall. We use another one of these spring-loaded bars in here. Keeps the plates in. Keeps the containers that are usually in here. Again, we've winterized so a lot of the stuff's not in here just really maximizes the amount of space and having the light makes it useful and we've done this like i say for all the vertical cupboards the, the two at the ends of that bunk they're they're clothes hanging up who cares but it's nice to be able to go into your cupboard and, and see what stuff you've got in there to that end there is more storage under this bunk so the gray portion you see there that is actually the, the tunnel that you access from outside the trailer to get into the storage space under the front of the bunk 
but the bottom two thirds of the bunk are also storage. This thing's heavy. This is a, a foam filled mattress. It's not actually that bad, like compared to if I had a sizable, uh, sizably thick spring mattress on it, it'd be even worse. But even with just a th flimsy little garbage mattress this thing came with, it's heavy and awkward. So, what do you do about that? Well, here's what you do about that. Gas struts. I am going to, at some point in time, do a video on these gas struts themselves. These are a Princess Auto Buy. They were just a random thing. There's no specific vehicle application, but these would be very similar to what you'd find on, you know, a hatchback or a station wagon or, you know, your, your crossover. Anything that's got a gas, gas uh, strut that lifts the tailgate. You have to find your own little brackets. Again, these are widely available online or in probably in a lot of hardware stores. We did this during the time of COVID, which made it a nightmare to find stuff, but we were able to get these. Uh, part of the trick to this, if you go online, you're going to find lots of people do this. A lot of them have it so the struts point up and down. Yeah, that opens the lid, but it wants to always open the lid, so you'd have to have a latch to keep it closed, and that's no good. That just sucks. It means you have to hold down on it, unlatch, and then the thing pops open. Even if you don't get the angle of this right, it'll still tend to want to open if you're going over bumps. The trick is just to make it so when they close, they're slightly over-centered, so it actually holds it down. It does mean you got to give it a tug to lift it, but it also means that it's only going to be open when you want it open. The light, the light in here is just a standard LED cargo area light, or, or you could use it as a roof light for this RV. Uh, I have, again, wired this in with a switch. So when you open the bunk, light comes on, light goes off. The switch is handy. If you were going to leave it open, you don't want to kill the battery when you're boondocking. Realistically, though, most of the time, the little, little switch in the corner here does the job. This thing is actually a 12-volt power point sort of like you'd have in your car again you know you're into the electrical system there isn't a 12 volt power point in these so if you've got a, a kid's game or some other accessory that for whatever reason you only have the 12 volt charger for it's kind of handy to have that now closing this you have to give it a, a little bit of a shove again because of the geometry of this once you get it past the halfway point it'll want to go down on its own there you go mind your fingers uh maybe i didn't make a point of it on the sides of this we've also put shoe storage when there's covers on the bed that stuff's actually kind of hidden and it keeps the shoes out of the middle of the floor it's handy winterizing when we winterize this trailer you got to get into the pump regardless of how you're going to do it whether you're using pressurized air or whether you're using the antifreeze like we do you still got to get at the pump so as you can see the manufacturer would like you to unscrew this cupboard to get at it i'm lazy i don't want to do that so these are standard cabinet door magnets for closure and they hold this thing on here perfectly fine as you can see this uh this thing wants to be where it is that's that's not rattling loose and it just makes getting at that a whole lot easier even if you had to for an emergency get it to pump or whatever else into there you don't have to have a screwdriver to make that happen and sometimes it's the simplest things that are the easiest not much cupboard or camper sorry counter space in one of these rvs so we looked at getting the proper cover for the sink not as easy as you think apparently there's more than one size of sink and uh, when you do find it it's fairly expensive it doesn't really make a lot of sense well, Ikea to the rescue again. This is a bamboo cutting board. And these are little rubber feet or door stoppers or whatever you want to call them. These are from Home Depot. They're in with all the, uh, the gate and counter hardware. And these little feet serve two purposes. One is they make it so the cutting board is not sliding when it's on a countertop. But they also lock into the corners of the sink so when you put the cutting board in there, you have now got a work surface that is not moving. You can travel with this, and unless you hit like the mother of all bumps, you will not ever see that move. It is staying. So after the success of that, we're like, well, we are never going to ever use the cooktop in this play in this trailer. 
we've, we've got a microwave. You probably saw the toaster oven that's under the bed. We have an induction hot plate and we have a barbecue. So this thing's never going to get used. Wasted space. Again, another one of these Ikea cutting boards. This time with two feet stacked to give it the height that it needed to clear everything. We still had to take the knobs off of this, but we're not using it, so it doesn't matter. And the low rubber feet lock into the little uh, grill on top of the burners. And that's what keeps it from moving. So I'm going to try and zoom in on this, but no promises. All right. It's into that one. It's into that one. There we go. So again, we're going to try and... Well, I think you get the idea, right? It's 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 locked into the shape of the, the burners and uh, not going to move anywhere. Simple stuff that makes life a lot easier. So the electrical stuff continues. We mentioned lighting. Newer trailers tend to have lights in here, at least the, the bigger, fancier ones do. Uh, this trailer did not have lighting in it. So this one is not micro switch activated because frankly, I thought it would get demolished with loading stuff in and out of here if I put something there. So you actually have to turn the light switch on and off in these ones, but still a very useful addition. The fuse box here is for all of the things that are being added to this. Like the light under the bunk has its own fuse and circuit. These lights have their own fuse and circuit. That's just the right way to do it. And frankly, it's fairly straightforward because the bunk is right on top of this. So, I mean, there's, there's the wiring for the light under the bunk. Easy. And that means that 12 volt power point has its own fuse, of course, too. This is a standard seven pin trailer connector. What a lot of people don't realize is that for vehicles that use surge brakes where you need something that disables them in reverse, this center pin right here, that's reverse feed. When you put your vehicle in reverse, if everything is working the way it's supposed to, that has 12 volt power on it in reverse. Now some trailers have reverse lights, very, very few, but why not take advantage of this? So we know that this harness has it. So all we gotta do, is go under the trailer and find the magic junction box right there and you're going to find trailer light 12 volt feed and this is useful because this allows us to put reverse lights so tapping into that 12 volt gives us a backup light or reverse light whatever you want to call it on the back of the trailer which is handy it lets people behind you know that you're backing up for one but it's also handy for late night site arrivals because that happens, especially in the end of the season, in the fall, where it gets dark so much sooner. You might not get to your site until it's, it's dark. It's helpful to have some light. And that's the reason why this is mounted at an angle, if you're wondering. You can't see through the trailer anyway, so unless you have a camera on the back of it and you're one of the fortunate people to do that, having it shining off to the sides is actually far more useful. These are just like a fairly inexpensive aluminum bodied LED light. We got these at Princess Auto. Again, really anything like a fog lighter or that would do. I would suggest using LED only because of the much lower current draw, so you're not gonna overwhelm or overload the circuit in the vehicle that's towing, because I don't think it's meant for really high current. You could put a relay in there so that you're using the chassis battery on the trailer and then just switching it with the power out of the seven pin, but our 4Runner has no problem running these at all, and I suspect pretty much any vehicle would be fine with it. One thing to note, if you're mounting to the tube bumper like we have, this is where you store your septic stuff normally. If you put the mounting stud too far over to the middle, this thing is like the exact dimensions of your hose. You will not fit it in. So if you notice... I've got that backed up as close to the tube wall as I can. And as it turns out, it works out like it doesn't interfere with anything at all. Otherwise, you might have to maybe make yourself some kind of a bracket or mount it to the body somehow. But in this case, pretty straightforward. And uh, let me tell you, the first time you, you come to a campsite at night, you'll be very grateful for having these. It makes life a lot easier. We're uh, really looking forward to Another season of camping, but that's it for this this uh, year. And if we come up with any new and exciting stuff, 
I'll certainly make a new video to share it with you, but I, I hope you find some of the little ideas that we had here useful to you. Until then, from, uh, from our Viking to you, happy camping.